Hi there and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be fixing flat and washed out images in Photopea with four simple techniques that will really make your images pop. So let's get started. As you can see I've got this image of a plate of salad which apart from the fact it's washed out flat and lacking contrast the actual photography is really nice and there's a really good potential image behind this. So I'm going to show you four techniques starting with the first although there are so many more ways these are four that I would say are the simplest. Create a new adjustment layer and create a brightness and contrast, which kind of seems obvious now you think about it. And as you would expect, just simply grab the contrast slider and just start dragging it up until the image is at a point that you feel it should be. You can, you can go too far with this, but it's a lot of it's to personal taste. So I'll say about there looks right. And if we just turn that on and off, that adjustment layer, look what a big, big difference that's just made. Now the downside of this adjustment layer is, it is kind of what it is. It's a contrast slider, which makes it super simple, but it's not really got much flexibility to tweak the image in any other way. It just gives you what it gives you and that's it. I wouldn't use the brightness slider in this. If you needed to make the image lighter or darker, I would just add a curve on top of this and just tweak that. Um, it will generally lead to better results. Now, if you've got an extremely washed out image and the contrast slider is maxed out and it's still not enough for you, then you can use this use legacy option, which enables an older algorithm that's a lot more severe. So if I take the contrast back down to zero and click use legacy. Now, if I drag up the same way, you'll see we've very quickly got to the point where we were earlier, but the contrast slider was maxed out which means you can go to the absolute extremes if you've got an extremely bad image. But for general use, I would just recommend the standard contrast adjustment and not legacy. Okay, so that's technique one. Technique two is levels. So go to our adjustment layers button again and select levels. Now with this technique, what you're looking at here on the screen is called a histogram and it's representing from the very left hand side where you see the black little box here to the right hand side of the white that is the entire spectrum of brightness values from absolute shadow to absolute white highlights and the histogram itself is where the pixels of the image are currently spread across that range so as you can see from ours if we go to the left hand side there's a big gap between the left hand side of the window and the start of the histogram data and the same at the highlight side now this is telling us that there's a lot of mid-tone information in this image, but there's absolutely nothing in the shadow or highlight areas. Hence why our image is looking flat. So all we need to do, if it looks like this, is grab the blocks. We'll start with the shadow block on the left hand side, the black values, and we'll just drag that across until it's touching the area where the data starts on this graph, on this histogram around there. And we'll do the same with the highlights. We'll drag it inwards until it kind of touches the area of data in the histogram and now the image is it's basically expanded the information across the entire range from shadow to highlight now which gives the result of a lot more contrasty and impactful image now the benefit of doing it this way is unlike the contrast adjustment previously we've now got a mid-tone block here in the middle this gray one which you can use to tweak it to make it push the mid-tones more towards the highlights or the shadows, giving you a brighter, more opened up image or a kind of a denser, darker version of the same image, but it will retain the absolute highlight and shadow points. So that's quite a good way to play around. Okay, so that's technique number two. Technique number three is curves. Now with the curves, adding contrast in a curve is quite common and you usually do it with two points. So you normally click on the line here, somewhere in your highlight area. So we'll just put it there. It's not an exact science, but normally towards the right hand side, maybe on the line of the first, or sorry, the last box here. And then do the same on the shadow side. So what we're doing here, we're dragging a point upwards, and this is brightening our highlight areas, basically. And we're doing do the opposite with the shadows, darkening the shadows so basically that's all contrast really is in a nutshell it's brightening bright areas and darkening already dark areas to just really push those values further apart which introduces contrast 
Now the good bit of a the good sorry the good part of using the curves technique is a bit like in the levels you get further adjustments, so you can move these points around left and right, up and down, and you can tweak these and just experiment and play around. And this this is the technique the prop gives you the most flexibility of how you want the image to look. Like you can bring this across to the left, and you're affecting more of the mid tones now which could brighten the image up in a different way. And I actually really like that because it's added a lot of saturation as well. So it really makes the image jump out. And that's brilliant for me. I'll be very happy with that. So let's move on to the fourth and final technique. Now I saved this one to last because it is the easiest of the lot, but it's probably the least flexible. And how we're going to do this is we're going to press Command or Control J to make a duplicate of the original layer. And we're going to change the blending mode to hard light and we're done. It's literally that easy to add contrast and punch into an image, duplicate the layer itself, the pixel layer, change the blending mode to one of the contrast modes, which is down here, overlay, soft light, hard light, vivid light, etc. And that's it. And if it's a bit too much for your image, I think it's perfect for this. But if it's a bit too much, you can always lower the opacity to blend them between themselves. Or you can choose a less harsh blending mode in the first place, like soft light. You can see it has a bit more of a subtle effect, but still a strong effect compared to the original. Look at the difference between that. The downside of this technique is you're creating a pixel duplicate of the layer, which just means that your file's going to be bigger than it needs to if you used an adjustment layer and some other things. But generally speaking, if you just want a quick and easy boost, it's as simple as that. And what I do recommend on top of any of the techniques I've shown you today is you can always create a vibrance adjustment layer on the top of any of the adjustments that we've made and just bring the vibrance up a little bit and watch those tomatoes and those peppers now not too much so we've added contrast and we've now added a bit of extra vibrance now the difference between vibrance and saturation because a lot of people get confused with this and what this is why i mostly recommend vibrance for everything or for most things is saturation increases the saturation of everything in the image evenly so it brings up everything with the same amount of saturation whereas vibrance targets the areas that are less saturated to start with so in theory it's only pushing the saturation in areas that it thinks need it so it's a little bit more of an intelligent option so you don't end up with colors that are absolutely blown out and that is it that is four simple and quick techniques to use to fix flat images and really make your photos pop in photopea